Hello, today I'm speaking with Brian and Carl about one of the things that CPE is working on over the coming weeks. And presumably beyond that, uh, we will see in the, in the priority meeting that comes up, but I think it's a foregone conclusion that this will continue after that. Um, in, the, in the video that I posted a week or two ago, I mentioned that CentOS Stream was one of the priorities that CPE is working on right now. So I asked Carl and Brian to, to join me to tell us what that means. Um, if you all could give us an overview of, of what that actually means, what, what it is that you're working on, what you hope to accomplish this quarter and potentially next quarter, when you know you'll be done, all that sort of stuff. I think I think we all have a pretty good idea of what CentOS Stream is at this point. Um, yeah. You know, it's really a, a a preview of what's going on in rel development at the moment. Um, I think I can talk a little bit about uh, where we've been so far. And I actually pulled this uh, this statistic from one of our tools that we were looking at. But uh, between April and about the beginning of November, we pushed around twenty five hundred packages, and so that's what. Uh, you know, the users should be seeing on their workstations if they have a stream install going. You see regular updates, uh, you know, coming through as, a, as an entire stream if uh, we're to overload that term even more. Uh, so, there, yeah, there were about 2,500 package pushes that happened automatically. And that's that's really the focus of things up to this point is automation, making sure that those new pieces of code from RHEL developers get out to uh, folks that can use it on their laptops or their desktops or anything like that. And so some, uh, you know, a lot of that is automation. The other, you know, big half is, you know, Carl takes all of those and actually pu pushes them through the build system to get them out to, uh, to developers. And so I think over the next, uh, you know, if we scope it into the uh, heading out towards the end of the calendar year, uh, we're expecting more of the same. We've got a lot of in uh, infrastructure to keep running in order to make that automation happen. And also to um, uh, see if we can, uh, take a, as much as possible out of uh, Carl's direct hands and make sure that we we automate that stuff so that he doesn't have to, uh, you know, spend a whole lot of time just typing away at a computer and stuff. But um, that's what it's taken so far. And then on towards the beginning of next year is when we start talking more about the what the infrastructure looks like for the future. So uh, we know that, um, you know, this pattern of, having the the rel developers do their internal rel development work and then bringing that code back out in order to make it happen for CentOS stream that's not the that's not a sustainable effort that's not the the way that CentOS stream is meant to work that was really just to make sure that we get our infrastructure up and running and so you know coming towards the the beginning of next year is when we start looking at more uh, some more collaborative forms of getting that code through the pipeline from start to finish um, and that includes things like infrastructure. You'll be seeing more things around uh, GitLab namespaces and uh, ways that the community can interact directly with Red Hat and Red Hat maintainers. So that was a long answer. I hope that uh, that covers it. At the end of this process, how much of it will still be manual typey typey and how much of it will in fact be automated? And when do you expect to get there? Well, automation is never finished uh, mm -hmm. because there's there's always things to do. Um, but uh, you know, things like having the uh, the builds for eight stream come through, and you know, without us having to touch them, that's um, that's what we're looking at at the moment. Well, it's not just going to be automation, and uh, I think a bigger a better way to look at it is not just. Not that we're getting away from you know people manually typing mm -hmm. things in, but spreading that load rather than having the very small CentOS team do all the rebuilding of those packages, getting the rel maintainers involved so that they're actually building their packages in CentOS stream first. And then that's what will make it a lot more sustainable. Yeah, to, to be clear, that's not happening by the end of this year though. That's a, a beginning of next year uh, activity. So, okay. but but that is that is indeed the goal. Yeah, that's what we're working towards. And eventually, those folks will be doing that work in in the upstream, in CentOS stream, right? Yes. When do you hope to achieve that that milestone? Is that is that in Q1 next year, or is that later than that? Do you think? Uh, it's, so it's sort of on a boundary. Um, I think we're definitely going to see uh, some of the patterns of activity show up 
you know, we're being deliberately vague here because there are a bunch of moving pieces and stuff because yeah. um, we've got infrastructure timelines and things like that. But, you know, January, February timeframe, we should be able to see the the pieces that happen, you know, that we're going to hook together to make this process work. Uh, and then, you know, later on, if um, a few months later, that's when rail maintainers actively take control. That's largely a scheduling mm -hmm. concern because like really, uh, you know, if you go back to the, what CentOS Stream is as a project, it's a, it's targeted at the next rel minor release. And, you know, a lot of rel maintainers are actually doing their, their work actively in Fedora at the moment. And then, you know, they've got this side, uh, uh, we've got this side process for making a stream happen. So, so CentOS Stream is not directly in the spotlight yet, but the mm -hmm. spotlight is moving, you know, ever towards us as, uh, you know, this year ends, the next year starts beginning, so. It sounds like a lot of the stuff that you're doing will remain invisible to the public. Is that is that right? If I'm sitting outside of Red Hat, what can I see of what you've already done? Yeah, I think a lot of what you've seen so far um, is, you know, directly in terms of what shows up on your laptop yeah. uh, whenever you type DNF update. Um, a, a lot of that up until this point that's been by design um, because, you know, we know that we have this, um, we've got this collaborative maintainer process that we're working towards uh, for the future of CentOS Stream and the future of RHEL even. But since that's not, uh, since we're working up to that, we didn't really necessarily want to, you know, to open up a whole bunch of uh, pieces of the, the behind the, the scenes infrastructure and then you know, move over to the the way that we actually want to do things. So, um, I think that's the that's the theme of that. But again, you'll you'll start seeing uh, the public pieces of the infrastructure, uh, specifically GitLab. Um, you know, on towards the the beginning of next year. What the aspect uh, of that that we think will really help us get things going is that, as it stands now, the Git Forge that we're using for the rail source code pushes. It, we're not allowed, we're not able to do actual pull requests on there because then that that would be diverging from what gets published. But with GitLab, we'll actually have it where it's not pull requests; there's merge requests. They will actually be able to be merged by the rel maintainers and actually reflect the state of thing, state of development. So our community members might want to know what they can do, um, either to help or to prepare for what's coming. Really, what we've been focused, um, what we've had folks focus on is. Uh, you know things like reporting bugs because that uh, that's always helpful in any part of the process here. So there's a um, if you go to bugzilla.redhat.com, there's uh, a, a version under the Red Hat Inter Enterprise Linux product for CentOS Stream. So uh, I think that's the the number one thing that you if you're looking to get actively involved in the the process here, uh, re report those bugs in because. Uh, we know for a fact that rail maintainers are looking at them and that they're they're having direct impact on what Red Hat does e even now. And so even though we're not quite ready with some of these modern development workflows, that's a that's a really good way to start. And that begins by, you know, go to the web page, uh, download the installers, put them on, you know, all of your systems that uh, that you would normally put, you know, other versions of Linux on and, and see how the next version of RHEL looks under the CentOS Stream branding. Well, thank you both very much for your time. And we look forward to, to seeing these, these uh, new developments go live. Good luck, and uh, I hope to talk to you again next quarter. Thanks, Rich.